Hi, this is Pete. Welcome to Old Machine Time Machine, where we're going to explore old junk that we find lying around in our basements. Um, let's see. This time, I have a Heathkit RF signal generator, model SG8. Uh, now, I've owned this thing for like 20 years, more than 20 years. Somebody gave it to me a long time ago, and I was like, sweet, a signal generator, and I put it in my basement and it's followed me from apartment to, from Minnesota to Colorado to house to house. I've never once plugged it in, not once. And I got a thing for signal generators. I don't know why I never did it. But let's talk about this thing, because it's pretty cool. Uh, now, I actually did look up the data sheet uh, for this thing, the construction manual. I wanted to be able to compare what the manual said with the sort of work that goes into this, because it's Heathkit, somebody put this together who is not a professional. Or maybe they were and they did it on their spare time. Um, but having a look at the uh, faceplate here, what we got, uh, we have a frequency range of about 160 kilohertz to 220 megahertz it'll go up to. Uh, and the dials, we have uh, the ranges uh, 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 that switch uh, the frequency ranges. Uh, that dial right there is just a segmented uh, switch. I can't remember the right term for that guy. Uh, RF output level, oh, check this out. The AC off is on the RF output. Well, that's a funny place to put that. Eh, there you go. Um, RF steps, okay, so this guy might be, might come more into play on the higher frequency? I'm not sure about that guy. Uh, audio frequency in and modulation, so check this out. Uh, again, I've only cursorily is that a word? Uh, looked at the data sheet to figure out how it works, but it'll take um, an audio input and it will modulate. Assumably FM, or not FM, uh, probably not gonna be FM, but it might be. Uh, probably an AM modulation um, at a guess. And I think I read in the data sheet that if you switch it to internal, that it's got a 400 hertz tone. <laughs> Don't remember, check that out. Um, and then lastly, or semi-lastly, PL259s, man, those were pretty popular. I mean, for, for all the ham guys, this is still popular stuff, I know. But it surprises me, even these days, like I would expect like an SMA or a BNC or something like that, but it's a PL259, so there you are. Um, oh, that <laughs> green, green light, have never seen. Please light me up. No, never. Uh, and then uh, the frequency, the, the knob, does not actuate the... <laughs> okay, whatever. All right, let's crack it open and have a look. All right, so we crack this thing open, and the first thing that occurs to me is like, wow, look at that, this is solid copper. <gasps> it's not copper. Not copper. <laughs> Just saying. Now, at a first glance, this looks pretty sweet. Um, the, the soldering looks decent. Big bus wire to the inductors. Uh, as I recall, these inductors are pre-made for the person putting it together because they look like they're really nice and sealed nicely. Uh, we got a 12 AU7 tube in the middle. And we got this other guy over here, and I can't remember what the number is, and I can't read the number on it, and I don't want to yank it out. Although, you know what? We should because you got to have your tube sockets fixed. H are, no, it's Heath. That says Heath. Uh, there's no number, so, all right, we'll forget that. Um, other things, I'll put that down for, <laughs> there's metal everywhere. Um, let's see, there is, oh, check out the big fin cap down there. That guy, oh, okay, so the two, the knob, yeah, that doesn't make anything happen, so. Okay, so you gotta spin the uh, the actual needle to get it to tune. Um, and let's see, flip this upside down. Oh, check this out. Tubes okay, 3rd of March, 96. So somebody had it before me in 96, and apparently they checked the tubes. So this thing probably still works. But, let's see. That looks like well, it looks, well, it looks kind of like, okay, so the case goes to ground, so that's a big electrolytic cap. I got a couple of other caps, but those are not electrolytics. Um, I haven't plugged this thing in yet. I don't want to, because I want to 
bring it up on a variac because of that guy. I could probably just turn it on and be fine, but yeah, I'm kind of a wuss when it comes to high voltage. So, um, oh man, look at look at the giant buses in this thing. Really want to <laughs> really want to read the directions now. Uh, but overall, the work looks you know for point to point, it looks pretty decent. I would use this. Um, yeah, I'm gonna power it up and see what it does. Uh, not today. I'm doing it on the variac. And that's it for today. Uh, if you've had any experience with the Heath kit, did I say SG8? I think it's SG8. If you've, if you've had any experience with these, or if you even have one and have stories, we wanna hear about it. So uh, put them in the comments uh, down below. And uh, if you have any gear that you want to have reviewed and have us have a look at, let me know and we'll go from there. All right, thanks for tuning in.